Hello, and welcome back to part 2 of my Unit 6 review video. I have no idea where I was really interrupted by the timing last time, so I'm just going to start this whole slide over. So, in this one we're going to be talking about the 5th uh, region of the world, that is considered an MDC, by the United Nations, HDI, and so, and that is Japan, and we're also going to be talking about the 4 slash 5 Asian Tigers slash Dragons. Uh, Japan has an HDI of 0.858, and if if you were to look at this, if you were to look at Japan, it's actually a surprise that it became as developed as it is right now. That's because it has little to no natural resources, which is which really hampers development. But, and because of this, this is why in history they've uh, had the conquesting nature of taking over countries because they needed their natural resources. But after World War II, they couldn't do that anymore. They couldn't just be like, oh, I need land, let's go conquer someone. They couldn't do that anymore, so they had to go to other alternatives. And that alternative was using their high labor force, and their one of their highest phys and the benefit of having one of the highest physiological densities in the world to their advantage. And boy, did they do it right. All right. Previously, they were the world's leading steel producers. Uh, they imported all their coal. That's the steel. They imported all the uh, coal and the iron, and then they they were able to make steel. Uh, now they produce high quality and high end products such as automobiles and computers. And this brings us into our conversation about the Asia, Asian tigers and dragons. Um, these countries are South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Some lists will include Japan in this list, while others will say that uh, these four countries fall in the footsteps of Japan. So, either way, just know that these are the countries involved. Um, what makes them special is that these were one of the first countries to adopt the international trade model and the theory, and the first ones to put it into uh, full effect practice. And a uh, similarity that these countries share is that they have virtually no natural resources in them, and they have to turn to other alternatives. Also, their countries are generally large cities with little rural land to use for uh, agricultural pr uh, production. One thing I know is that Japan actually imp uh, imports a really high percentage of its food, around 90% from uh, its neighbors. And so, these are countries that are predominantly large cities that have uh, little agricultural land. Um, and so, the way they developed is they promoted development by using their labor to their advantage and producing high uh, and manufacturing goods. Uh, so, now let's go into thinking spatially through LDCs and the uh, less developed regions of the world. And so on the top is Latin America with a point eight zero uh, HDI. And so, some aspects of this region is that it has more urban dwellers more urban residents than the other developing regions, but is unfortunately plagued with the problem of having really, really unequal resource and uh, capital distribution throughout the regions. Uh, next we have East Asia with a HDI of 0.76, and so East Asia is pretty much China, which is the world's second largest economy and largest market for consumer products. And it attracted manufacturing due to low labor wages, which is which is changing now because of the labor wages going up. And countries that previously uh, used them as places to get labor are now shifting to other regions of the world. And so you kind of see this, this scale tipping. And so we'll just have to see how that bodes for China. Uh, next is the Middle East with an HDI of 0.68. And similar to Japan, it's surprising that this country is so high up. It's in a desert and it can't support much animal or plant life or human life either. Uh, but this goes back to our discussion about the kumine and how it grows as time goes on. But despite all this, it is the only region that can boast a trade surplus. And the question is why? And the reason why, as you probably know, is this region is thriving off of a resource that is in high global demand right now. There's 
oil, petroleum, and natural gas. And so, uh, because of this, it was able it's able to really boost up its uh, economy. And, uh, some of the Persian Gulf states actually have some of the highest uh, GDP per capita in the world. But where they suffer is when it comes to uh, gender inequality. Gender equality. They suffer in gender equality because they have gender inequality. There we go. Next, this here last two regions, uh, South Asia, which has an HDI of 0.58. It has the second highest population in the world, but has the second lowest GDP per capita. And so, al already you can say, you can see, this is that this is an unfavorable balance going on, with not enough money to sustain uh, so many people. Uh, they produce many agricultural products, such as rice and jute. Uh, and they were another fact is that they were the primary benefactors of the Green Revolution, with Mexico being the other. And finally, at the very bottom of our list, poor Sub-Saharan Africa, with a 0.51 HDI, it's the poorest region in the world, but it has a favorable favorable amount of natural resources. The reason it is in this uh, state is due to legacies from its colonial era and the impacts that were left behind. And now finally, let's look at development and gender. Uh, in order to rate the development of genders around the world, uh, similar to development in general, the UN uh, created two different me measures, the GDI and the GEM. Uh, the, gender, the GDI is a gender-related development index, and it is used to uh, reflect the accomplishments and conditions of men and women throughout the country. Uh, currently, the highest in the world is Norway with 0.96, the cap being 1, similar to the HDI. And the lowest GDIs can be found in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so, in every single country in the world, there is a, a margin, a gap between men and women. And what, what this is measuring is how much that is, and it looks at uh, the accomplishment and conditions. And then next we have the Gender Empowerment Index. Ooh, I messed that up, didn't I? That's not it. It's not right. That's the GEM. Oops. GEM. Well, that is the GDI. There we go. So, Gender Empowerment Index, GEM. Uh, it measures the degree of political and economic power helping women, so this is kind of more of a, a specialized version. Uh, it uh, the two indicators are percentage of women in administrative and managerial positions, and the percentage of women uh, elected to public office. In every single country in the world at this point, the GEM is lower than the GDI. So that wraps up my review for chapter nine for unit six, I'm talking about development. Um, hope you enjoyed that, and see you later.